Hello, great talks, and welcome to yet another video with Async Accounting. As always, whether it's balance sheets or cost accounting, I have got you covered. So before we dive into today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join our amazing accounting family so that we can ace accounting together. Now, today we'll be focusing on the Guazulu Natal Provincial Paper that was written in September 2023 and it was a preparatory examination and it's paper one. So as we are doing this paper, I just hope you are also having your calculator by your side with a pen and paper so that you can just jot down all uh, important concepts and principles as far as the question is concerned. Now, today we're just going to focus on what other people call a nightmare, aka the income statement. So without any wasting any any more time, we have this question for 60 marks in 50 minutes. And the question uh, or the information rather relates to Itropo LTD for the financial year ended 28 February 2023. So since we're given this information, it's really important to highlight your year end so that you can be able to draw your timelines in the correct manner. So we know that our year began on the 1st of March, 2022. And then the, the first required says calculate the total depreciation for the year for a total of 10 marks. So they were not specific uh, whether to calculate depreciation on vehicles or equipment or any other machinery like that. So I presume that we are going to calculate the depreciation, <coughs> excuse me, the depreciation on all the assets of the business. But when we look at our information now, we're just going to start with, with information A. We're given an, uh, an extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance on the 28th of February uh, for both years 2022 and 2023. So considering the first question, we can see that we are given here the high calls, okay? Then we are also given, uh, I can see, equipment. So I guess we could be calculating depreciation on these two types of assets. Then when we scroll, we can see that now we have information on the high calls given on, um, um, what's this information, G? then also information age pertains our equipment. So let's just quickly start with vehicles and tackle um, the, info, the two bullet points that we are given. So the first bullet point is an old delivery vehicle with a carrying value of 170K on 1 March 2022 was sold for 150,000 cash on the 1st of December 2022. Right. Then they also telling us that depreciation for vehicles is a 20% on diminishing balance. So this is an alarm to you that I should use a carrying a carrying value to calculate my depreciation. Right. So now we know that every time we calculate depreciation, we will either have depreciation for new, we would have depreciation for remaining right then we would have depreciation for the sold right so each and every time we calculate depreciation you need to check for these three things um that uh, are they there or are they not so that you can get your depreciation calculation correct right so for vehicles we have sold Okay, like they said, they sold uh, an old delivery vehicle for carrying value of 170,000 on the 1st of March, 2022. Then they sold it on the 1st of December, 2022. Now, this is also another alarm for you to draw your timeline to calculate the correct number of months um, for the vehicle. So now we are going to calculate the number of months that it was used for in the current year. So the year ends on Feb, it started on the 1st of March, then we have March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, Jan. OK, 
Okay, let's just do that. December, November, October. Okay, June, May, April. Right. So we're only going to count up until the 31st of November because we haven't uh, used the vehicle after the month of December. Like we haven't used it for full month of December. We haven't actually used it for December. So we're only going to count until the end of November. So we've only used it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. Right. We've used it for nine months. So we're only going to depreciate it for nine months. Now we quickly go to our workings. We've used it for nine months. Let's just do this first. The high calls, nine months. Oh, I just keep on making this mistake. So we'll just say sold. Then it's nine over 12 multiplied by 170 because that was its carrying value. And they are depreciated at 20% per annum. And just quickly grab your calculator and see what the answer is. So that's uh, 170 times 20%. Then that is 25,500. Okay. Then we are going to check for the remaining vehicles. For the remaining vehicles, um, we're not given the balance or the cost of vehicles at the end because this is the child balance and this is the cost of vehicles. But remember that we are calculating our carrying values using our, our depreciation, I'm sorry, using our carrying value. So at some point we would need to use the formula that says cost minus accumulated depreciation is equal to, is equal to the carrying value. So for vehicles, when we opened, we had a cost of 800,000 and we had an opening accumulated depreciation of 415,000. So the carrying amount for vehicles is, uh, let's just quickly calculate, 385,000. All right, so that's the carrying amount at start. Now let's just get that to our answer book so we could just say remaining here all right so we had 800,000 minus 415,000 accumulated depreciation then because this is the remaining we need to remove the, the carrying amount of the vehicles that were sold right the carrying amount of the vehicle that was sold is 170,000 all right so we said 385, so we got 385 for this one, right? Just to make sure that everyone is catching up. So it's 385,000 minus 170,000. Then that gives us 215,000. This is the carrying amount for the vehicles that are left, right? Now, these are going to be depreciated for the full 20% uh, because they were used for the, the whole year, right? So this would result to, okay, times 0 0.2, that's 43,000. So that's our depreciation there. Let me just highlight our final figures so we can see what we're adding up at the end, right? Then now we are done with the high calls, which is quickly going to jump to our equipment. Okay, so with equipment, we have new equipment costing 50,000 was purchased on the 1st of November 2022 for cash. Transaction was properly recorded. We have new equipment in this case, which is going to have equipment purchased for 50,000. That's the cost. And then equipment is depreciated at 15% per annum on cost. So we're going to start with the 50,000. The 50, so this is the new so it was purchased for 50,000, but was it used for the whole year? That's the question that you're supposed to ask yourself. No, it was purchased on the 1st of November. Okay, so let's see how many months have we used it for. I'm just going to erase here so we can use the space to do some calculations. 1st of November, we have used it for the month of November. So we've used it for one, 
two, three, four months. So I've used it for only four over the 12 months and equipment is depreciated at 15% on cost. Don't forget that times 15%. So that's the new. Now 50 times 4 over 12 times 0 0.15. So that's 2,500. Oops. That's 2,500. Now we are just going to do the remaining or rather the old, the ones that were there before we purchased the new one. We know that now this year they've given us the closing balance of 910,000 which includes the new but we know that the old balance that they haven't given us does not include the new equipment right so we would need to have the 910 minus the 50,000 right so the 910 minus the 50,000 that is new would give us 860,000. So before we bought the new equipment, we had equipment worth 860,000 rands. Then now whenever you calculate we are you are calculating depreciation on cost, you need to check whether there is a, an asset that is fully depreciated depreciated or all of the equipment is not fully depreciated. So like I've stated in my previous videos um, if, you, if you've definitely watched, you would know this, that whenever you are checking your, your depreciation on that is calculated on cost, you need to check if there isn't any, uh, um, any asset that is fully depreciated. So you just need to keep that at the back of your mind. So we're also going to check here if there isn't any asset that is fully depreciated so like we have calculated now our cost of 860 let's just get this into our answer book so we could say old we had a calculation okay the numbers are just lost oh now i remember it's just 910 minus the 50,000, which is 860,000. All right so remember that we are depreciating at 15% um, per annum on cost. Then we will say 860 multiplied by 15%. Then let's see what that gives. So 860 times 15%, which is 129,000. Right. But let's see our accumulated depreciation. If our accumulated depreciation is greater than the cost, then it would be an alarm of an asset that is fully depreciated. Now, so we have an accumulated depreciation, our opening of 782 on the old equipment. Remember, this is for the old before we bought the new one. The new one is fine. We're just working with the old now. We have accumulated depreciation of 782,000 right but now if we add the current year's depreciation of 129 that we've just calculated then we would result with and let's just quickly see with um a, a total accumulated depreciation of 910,000 911,000 so that is actually greater than the cost of the equipment this simply means that our equipment is now fully depreciated but then how do we fully depreciate our asset by getting the carrying amount of the asset and then we subtract only one from our carrying amount of the asset how do we do this okay so let's get into the question now that we've seen that it is fully depreciated we are just going to um so let's just do this or rather okay let me just not erase that we would have now let's just prove that this full uh, it is fully depreciated like we've just done so that the examiner can allow us all our marks plus 782 plus 9 oh 
this is going to be the answer so it's going to be 911 so you could say fully depreciated therefore i'm so sorry okay this is just going it's overlapping now so therefore now the depreciation will be equal to so you would say 860,000 minus the accumulated depreciation now we are calculating the carrying um carrying value right so this is our carrying amount then from the carrying amount we would subtract one right so that we are fully depreciating it so it's 860 minus 782 then we are going to subtract one then we are just going to see what that gives and we have 70 77999 all right let me just make sure that is correct 72 minus one yes yeah, 77999 so that is our fully uh, depreciated equipment because our equipment was fully depreciated we are going to only subtract one from the carrying amount and that will be our depreciation so the depreciation amount that we're going to add is the ones i have highlighted and also this one okay let's just calculate and see what we get quickly then seven seven okay so okay twenty five thousand five hundred plus forty three two thousand five hundred seven seven okay so that's a hundred and forty eight nine 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 so that's our total depreciation and that's it for 10 marks right now we move to the broad question which is for 35 marks but uh don't be scared because because you've got async accounting right by your side so they said complete the statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 28 february 2023 okay so we need to consider all the information that we have been doing so i just like us to start from information b of course uh information b says trade discounts of 360,000 was allowed on invoices to certain customers the businesses uh the business the business prices its goods at a markup of 70 percent on cost okay we've got 70 markup of 70 percent on cost then we have 360,000 trade discounts that was allowed so you know that now if they say 70 percent on cost you know that your cost is 100 percent and your your your, sale, your selling price is 170 percent okay then uh your gross profit is your what's this your okay it's gp then you have got your cost price and you have your selling price so this would be your gross profit then now we are just going to go to our statement of comprehensive income we have been given some of the figures there so we won't really need to calculate everything but we can just quickly plug in the depreciation because we have calculated it already as 148.999 let me just ensure that it's correct one yes so here we have gross profit which is what we're supposed to calculate right after we calculate our sales okay so let's just check any amount that we have on sales on our information a so we have sales there and we are not really given anything so that's what we are supposed to calculate right 
So let's just quickly calculate our cells. Like I said, your cells are 170, what we want over what we know, multiplied by the cost of sales. Cost of sales, we were given an amount of, let's just look at here, we were given an amount of 4,809,000. 4,809,000. Okay, then we just quickly grab that calculator and let's see. We have sales of 8,175,300. Five, but remember, we add trade discount of 360. We're just going to subtract the 360,000. Then let's see what we get. And we're getting sales of 7,815,300. Okay, so these are the easy marks that you're supposed to grab when you are doing your income statement and don't get confused by just a simple question. So we have 7,815,300. Remember, these are trade discounts, so we have to remove them from our sales. Then Calculate our gross profit seven eight one five three hundred minus four. Okay, then that gives us three million and three million six thousand three hundred. Okay, right. Then we then have our other operating operating income. Handwriting is a bit shaky. Okay, so for our other operating income, we would just go accordingly with the information that we're given. Information C says the provision for bed debts must be adjusted to. So take note of this. In this case, it is to. Sometimes it could be by. So in this case, we need to do a calculation because I said it must be adjusted to 7,500 and 15. Let's see what it was the previous year. Our provision for bad debts, it is here. Okay, so it was seven, it was 8,135. It was more in the previous year. So in the current year, we are reducing it to 7,515. So the difference, it's 8,135. We are removing 7515. So 8135. So the difference is 620. So the difference of 620, because it is it is an it is a decrease in our provision for bed debts, this becomes an income for the company. So this becomes an income and it just goes to our other operating income so we have provision provision for bed debts adjustment so we're adjusting our debt our bed debt so that's for 620 then we are going to have right we're going to have our okay information d rent so it says rent has been received until 31 may 2023 the monthly rent increased by 10 percent on the 1st of november 2023 okay so we would need to draw a timeline there okay i just need some space okay let's just use this timeline and First things first, you need to consider how many months have we received the rent. Um, we have received it until the 31st of May. That means we need to extend our timeline. Okay, so let me just use the different color. Got Feb, um, March, April, May. Okay, so we've received it for 12. Mm, let me just do this. We've received it for 12 plus the one, two, three months. We received it for 15 months. We've received rent for 15 months. And you know that in the income statement, we're only supposed to record things that are for 
this current financial year so the three months we would need to remove them okay but we first need to calculate um the monthly rental with and without the increment of 10 percent so a rent has been received until the 31st of may the monthly rent increased by 10 percent on the 1st of november 2022 today i'll just be showing you guys a different method of calculating rent just in case you did not understand the previous ones i was using so in this case um let me just ensure that i was reading the correct thing so it increased on the 1st of november right so all this year or all these months or almost at years so from here it increased by 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent 10 10 10 and 10 for one two three four five six seven months we have been paying 100 percent plus 10 seven times 110 percent right now um so we do not know the monthly rental let me just start by getting this into a formula we had rent income of 62,000 in total i just don't have enough space okay let me just try using the space so we had a total rent income of 62,800 right so this 62,800 is composed of monthly payments from the 1st of march up until the 31st of um the 31st of may 2023 okay i'll just move my timeline here and i'll paste it here okay so now what we are noting is that we have paid seven months of um of x that we do not know right um for 110 percent we paid 110 percent of that amount so this is the original monthly monthly payment okay so that's that's x let we let x be our original monthly payment then we had one two three four five six seven eight eight months of 100 100 percent payment right because this is without without the increment okay so that's without the increment now we need to solve for x okay let's just solve for x so what we have we are going to have seven times 110 percent okay let's just do this so we're going to have 770 um, x percent plus we're going to have 800 800 x percent uh, 62 800 then now we are just going to do this and convert these into percentages so let's just say 7 times 110 percent then we're going to get 7.7 x plus 8 x All right then now we have 62 800 equal to 7.7 7 plus 8 which gives 15.7 x then we say 15.7 15.7 and x will be 62800.7 which is 4000 per month so the 4000 would have been our monthly rental i just hope that was not confusing it is just multiplying the percentages and just swapping things around so um if this if this way was a bit confusing you could opt for the previous method that was i was using in the past um 
past examples, but they're quite similar. It just did that in this case, I was using percentages. Okay, so this would have been our original monthly rental. Then 110% times 4,000 would then be, uh, let's see, 110% times 4,000 then it is 4,400, right? So with the 4,400, we then need to multiply it by three because we paid three months in advance, right? So it's 4,400 times three, which will then give us 13,200. I just need to highlight this again. Please do not be alarmed by this uh, calculation that is that looks a bit confusing please ensure that you watch other videos where i do um, rent calculations on income statements uh, those are quite easy i prefer those other methods also this one is a bit tricky that's why i also don't like it but i just wanted to show you guys another method that i or you could use when you are working with rent income so that's what this is what we need then to subtract from our rent income so now we have rent income rent income okay then we have 68,200 minus 13,200 let's see what that gives then that's 55,000 for our rent is it 68,200 yes so 62 let me just ensure the calculation is correct oh no that's 49,600 right sorry about that then okay, let's just make sure this is legible we then move on to okay, we're done print and our director's fees. They said the director's fees were paid um, to two directors. One director requested that his fees for March 2023 be paid in February 2023 due to financial problems. The committee agreed the two directors received the same monthly pay. So we are paying two directors. We're paying them each and every month. Our year has 12 months. So in total, we are supposed to make how many payments? We are supposed to make 24 payments. But one of the directors said, may you please pay me in advance? And that added an extra payment, which resulted into 25 total payments. But we know that one of the payments that does not really relate to the current financial year. So we only need 24 payments to reflect in our income statement this year. So we would have 24, what we want over what we know, multiplied by our director's fees that we were given of 625,000. So that's 6 to Five. Right, then it's 24 over 25 times 625, then that gives an amount of 600,000. Okay, so that's what we are supposed to record for our director's fees. So this goes on to our director's fees. And we are recording 600,000. So it was 24 over 25 multiplied, oops, that's 25 multiplied by 600,000. Oh, 625. Beg your pardon. Right. Then that's it with our director's fees. Nice, quick and easy. Then we have advertising of 57,700, which consists of a monthly contract. And it's with a local radio station. 
Now, advertising was paid for 13 months, right? The contract rate was decreased by 200 per month from the 1st of December 2022. This is another tricky one where we need to draw our timeline. So we'll just draw our timeline quickly. And we have, um, was paid for 13 months. I'll just use a different color, just use green. And it was um, March here. This is also March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, Jan, then you have Feb. So um, they said advertising an amount of 57,700 consists of a monthly contract with a local radio station. So it was paid for 13 months, of course, and the contract rate was decreased by 200 per month from the 1st of December, 2022. So from the 1st of December, here we have it. We have the decrease of 200, decrease of 200 here, 200 and 200. All of these 200s, they, they, they amount to 2, 4, 6, 8. So a total decrease of 800. Okay, so now when we go to our, um, so uh, when we go to our information here that we, we are given, we have advertising of 87,000 that we can just quickly fill in whilst we are going to figure out our calculation. So advertising, all right, so we would have 87,000. Okay, we're definitely going to subtract something there. Let's just quickly calculate. So from the 1st of December, they reduced the rate by 200 per month. All right, like they said, they said they reduced it by 200 per month from the 1st of December, 2022. Right. So with this question, um, I'll just continue here. We were given 57,700 and they told us about a decrease of 200 per month. And we, we now know that the total decrease, let's say that we wouldn't, we didn't have the decrease, then we would have a total of um, an additional 800. So we have 57,700 um, plus 800 then that gives 58,500 okay then now we need to get the monthly payment of this insurance thing so oh not insurance advertising rather so it's 58,500 then we will divide it by 13 months because they have paid it for a total of 13 months right so don't make them don't make the mistake of dividing it by 12 so it's 58,500 divided by 13, which means per month, before there was the decrease, we were paying 4,500. Now, there was a decrease of 200. We are going to say 4,500, four, four, excuse me, minus, minus 200, which gives us 4,300. Okay. Then that is what we are paying currently but remember that we have paid for one month in advance then we need to remove um the amount that we've paid for that month which is 4300 so for advertising we have 87000 minus 4300 right so it's 87 minus 4300 and that gives 82700 Okay, so we are done with advertising and we'll go back to vehicles now. An old vehicle was sold, of course, at a carrying value of 170 at the start of the year, was sold for 150 cash. We need to know whether this amount was either sold, um, whether this vehicle was either sold at a profit or a loss. All right, so that's what we need to determine now. So because we've already calculated the depreciation on the first question, and we've discovered that the depreciation was 25,500, 
Now, let's just get whether it was a profit or a loss because it had a carrying amount of 170 when we started. And then we are going to remove the depreciation of 25,500 to determine the carrying amount on the date of sale. So it's 170 minus 25,500 and I'm getting 144,500. This is the carrying value that we could sell it for. But we, we instead sold it for 150,000. So we have made a total profit of 150 minus 144,500. So we've made a total profit of 5,500, right? So this goes to our other operating income. So profit on sale of asset, and that is 5,500. Right, so I guess we're done with our other operating income as I can see that our space is no more there, but let's just finish with our, our information that we're given. Then we are going to equipment, so nothing, I guess we are just going to record nothing on equipment. Then information I says two debtors with credit balances totaling 15,000 must be transferred to the creditor's ledger. So two debtors, so these are debtors, right? They had credit balances. Credit balances totaling 15,000 must be transferred to the creditor's ledger. So we're transferring this to the creditor's ledger, right? Um, what this means is that our debtors are now turned into creditors because you know that a debtor once they have a credit balance that means they have overpaid and now we owe that debtor so this means we need to subtract from our debtors control so if you could just have a look at your debtors control of um 135 um 135 300 and our creditors control of 112755 so we would need to adjust these two amounts, um, remove one from the other and add one to the other. So I guess this could work on our next question, which requires us to complete the current liability section of the statement of financial position. But for now, in the income statement, let's just ignore it and we'll see if there's some information that is left out, then we'll come back to it. Then we have a loan. And the repayments on the loan are fixed at 40,000 per month, including capitalized interest, right? So the repayments on the loans are fixed uh, at 40% per month. Like I said, I like rereading questions so I can get them into my head and properly understand what is actually happening in a question. So these include interest. And interest for the next financial year will decline by 5% from the 2023 interest on loan. Okay, so in our income statement, we are going to consider the interest on loan. Let's see if it's given. No, we are not given anything about the interest. But um, what if we could give, if we could get uh, any further information, then we could work our way up. From there but let's just finish and we are also saying we're also given that um, after taking all the adjustments above into our uh, into account the following were correctly calculated our operating profits at two million and thirty thousand then total dividends for the year at three hundred and eighty thousand then income tax for the financial year was calculated as six hundred thousand this is 30% of the net profit before tax. We know that the net profit before tax is 100%. We've given our tax as 30%. And now we know that our net profit after tax will be equal to 70%. So like I said, we just needed some further information so that we can work some of the figures up uh, 
from the bottom so we we have our net profit after tax as 70 right we have 70 over 30 then taxation we given our taxation as um, 600,000 right so we can just quickly plug it in there so 600,000 then we have what we want over what we know multiplied by the amount of 600,000 then let's just see what our net profit after tax is times 600,000 then that gives 1,400,000 then okay we have a minus we will add this back and that gives 2 million right then interest income we're not given any information it's going to be a balancing figure then we just now need to consider um anything else that is missing on our um pre-adjustment chart balance so what we didn't take into account is our sundry expenses of course we are given a, a question mark which means it's also going to be a figure that we have to determine and salaries and wages are also given audit fees are given insurance was also given there then now we can just calculate whatever is left so let's just quickly sum up our operating other operating income and see what we get there 5500 so that is 605720 and you add it with your Gross profit, so we'll say gross um, operating gross operating income. My handwriting is a bit shaky. Uh, that will give three million six hundred and twelve thousand, and then you have two six one two zero two zero. Okay. Then at the end we are given our operating profit that means we can just simply calculate our operate the total of our operating expenses okay so our operating expenses we know we can just get them by taking this and subtracting that minus two zero three zero so our operating expenses amount to one million five hundred and eighty two thousand zero to zero and twenty okay then now we are just going to have our sundry sundry expenses not sunday but sundry then our sundry expenses we're just going to because if we add all of these amounts they are supposed to give us this amount now we are going to do the reverse we're going to take this amount subtract all of these amounts that we have in order to get our sundry expenses okay so we'll take our operating expenses the total of one million five hundred and eighty two thousand and twenty then we minus all these individual amounts to get this amount okay let's just quickly do that and see what we get or 10, 5, 2, 6, 8, 5, 5, minus 1, 4, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9 600,000, minus 82,700, then uh, that's 20,356. Okay, so that's our sundry expenses then for interest income like i said it is an operator um, not an operating but it is a balancing figure then now we need to consider our interest expenses so interest expense will go back to the loan i just wanted to see if we could have any further information or any simpler way to get it okay so i'll just erase this for the interest so they said that the repayments on the loan are fixed at 40% per month, including capitalized interest. 
Okay, that's the first part we're going to focus on because this um, just goes on to our current liability section. When we go here, we would have information on the loan, right? So the information that we have is that the loan last year when we closed it was 3,100,000. And this year it is 2,850,000. So I just want us to see the difference between the two. So the difference between the two, right, is 2,850. Okay, let's just uh, see the difference. So the difference is 250,000, right? And here they said that's they, that they pay 40,000 per month. So 40,000 times 12, okay, 40,000 times 12 amounts to 480,000, right? So now the 480 it's 480000 but it only decreased by 200 uh, by 250000 so now the interest should be then um let's just do our calculation 480000 minus 250000 okay which is 230,000, okay? So that is then our interest expense, okay? Because we were paying 480,000, that's what we have paid, but it has only decreased by 250,000. So that means the other, um, the other, factor that was increasing our loan would have only been the interest so now the interest is 230,000 so our interest expense is then um interest expenses 230,000 right so it decreases our profit then now we can just calculate the operating profit before interest expense uh that's 2 million and Oh, it's two million two hundred and thirty thousand. Then we can just solve for our interest income, and you can just simply see that the balancing figure is two hundred thousand. And then that's it for thirty-five full marks. Okay. Then we are just not done. We are going to move to our current liabilities section for of the statement of financial position. Okay. So here, the first thing that you know, um, you can just fill in, of course, it's uh, your trade and other payables, payables, of course. Then you also have your current, current portion of loan. All right, so now, um, we were told that we have um, information I, so they just uh, pushed it in here, and remember that we haven't done anything for inf information I, so that's what we need to consider. So two debtors, um, we remember that they had credit balances, and we need to transfer their balance of 15,000 combined to the creditor's ledger. So we're just going to be adding the 15,000 to our creditors um, there. So we are adding the 15,000, we're not done yet, plus um, what we have here. So our creditors control, 112755, uh, okay, 112755 plus any other amounts that we have received in advance because we haven't rendered a service we haven't earned that amount we have only received receiving and earning are not the same we need to distinguish between those two so whatever we whatever we have received in advance has to go into our 
trade and other trade uh, trade and other payables. So remember that we had rent received um, in, in in advance. So at any point in time, whenever you're doing calculations, just um, make a little note next to the bullet point or wherever on the paper where you could just be reminded that okay my rent income needs to go to um, my my current liabilities or you could say rent received in advance do the abbreviation which is rent received in advance so you can just remember when you, you you're doing something like this so this helps especially when you're doing your income statement and and your your balance sheet in in one question so it really really comes handy in such questions so like i said we the rent how much did we uh, receive in advance this thirteen thousand two hundred we received it in advance so we're just going to add thirteen thousand two hundred and that's it so fifteen plus one one two seven five five plus thirteen thousand two hundred which is one four zero nine five five then the current portion of the loan we remember that we were paying four hundred and eighty thousand okay then because i'm putting the minus there because they said um interest for the next financial year will decline by five percent from the 2023 interest <clears throat> on loan excuse me so now that interest for the next financial year will decline by five percent we already know that in, that the interest is 20 to 230,000 rather so we will just say the 230,000 right multiplied by we could say 95 percent for the sake of simplicity and and efficiency so 230 multiplied by 95%, oops, 95%, which is 218,500. Now, so this is just going to be our interest for the next financial year. And that's what we're just going to <coughs> remove as our interest. So it's 218,500. So it's 480 minus 218,500. So that's 261,500,000. Oh, 261,500. Please don't, don't get confused. Then we are also going to consider our taxation there. We have, uh, we have um, SARS tax. So I'll just say taxation um taxation source <clears throat> so our taxation we have taxation of six hundred thousand and with our information let's just see how much we have paid to source this year and we have a debit balance of five hundred thousand and you know that a liability increases on the credit side so this decreased our liability of 600,000 that we have this current financial year. So the liability of 600,000 that we have has only been decreased by 500,000. Then that means we have a liability of 100,000 that is left. Okay, so I hope that is just simple and clear. Then that is 600,000 minus 500,000 then that is 100,000 right then one last thing it's shareholders for dividends okay shareholders for dividends we were told in information k that our total dividends for the year were 380,000, right? So this includes interim plus final. But remember that the only ones that we owe is final, right? 
So we do not owe the interim because we've already paid and we need to determine how much um, our final dividends. Then we have the information here. And then here they said ordinary share dividends. Ordinary share dividends are those that we have paid. Remember we have ordinary share dividends. Then we have shareholders. Shareholders for dividends. The terminology is also important to know. These ones we have already paid. So we've already paid the 210,000. Then that means what we owe to our shareholders is 380 minus 210,000. Okay, so that's 380 minus 210,000. That's 170. All right, so let's just quickly sum up and see what we get for our current liabilities. 140, 955, 261. Mm, okay, then 170. So that's 6. I don't know where they started up. Okay, I'll just write up here. 6, 7, 2, 4, 5, 5. And that's it for our 60 marks question i really really hope that was helpful and you got a few things to grasp as you are preparing for your pre-trial examinations um please don't forget to subscribe like share and drop a comment on any accounting topic that you might need help with and i'll definitely see you in the next video cheers